Good morning. It is April 1st, very early for me on a Monday, and it's spring break. And I just wanted to welcome you all to the Lent devotional. And I'll give it just a few seconds to let people join, and then we can get started. I hope everyone is well this morning. Hi, Meredith. Okay, I am going to get started. It's April 1st. I'm Christine Richart, and I've been at OSLC for about 10 years. I'm married to Todd Richart, and we have um, two little girls, eight and 11. You can often find me at least every other weekend upstairs teaching Sunday school in our second grade class. And um, if I'm not upstairs, we're down at the 9.30 or 11 o'clock service. So with that, I will lead us in prayer and we'll get started. Father God, thank you for this day and thank you for everyone gathered this morning to listen to your word. Help us to hear your words and understand them and use them in our day to day and going forward. In your name we pray, amen. Today's reading is John chapter 13, verses 18 through 38. And if you wanna get there, I will get started. I am not referring to all of you I know those I have chosen, but this is to fulfill the scripture. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. I am telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe I am he. I tell you the truth. Whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another, at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then, dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. What you are about to do, do quickly, Jesus told him but no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. When he was gone, Jesus said, now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me and just as I told the Jews, I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples. And if you love one another, Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? I tell you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. This ends the reading. 
Um, some thoughts about it. I think this passage speaks to the fact that we aren't necessarily to focus our attention on Judas specifically, even though he was pointed out as the one who would betray Jesus. Um, I think the words are telling us about the sins of Christians and how our sins are the grief of Christ. Jesus talks about how he is being glorified now in his suffering and um, that we cannot follow him to our, his heavenly happiness, but if we truly believe in him, then we shall follow him later. For now, we must wait for the time and do his work here on earth. As one who likes to have a plan and always be prepared, this makes me feel a little more structured and prepared, like I have a purpose. Um, one of my favorite parts of the scripture is verse 34 and 35. A new command I give you, love one another. <clears throat> As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. These words make me feel that each and every day I need to rise up and love the people around me and lead a life that Jesus would want me to lead, to live like Jesus, as we often say at our church. So we all have moments or days that are difficult, um, but this scripture reminds me that Jesus commanded it and therefore I should try it each day to fulfill it. I also find comfort in the words that Jesus will be able, um, that we'll be able to follow Jesus later. It's nice to read the words in the Bible and know that there's something even greater um, after our time on earth is over. And seeing them written on the page is just more so to show me that it's true. Those are my thoughts about our reading this morning. And i just like to end us in a little bit of prayer. Jesus, you love the world, you love us, and you call us to love others as you have loved us. Remind us to love others not simply as we conceive it, but as they perceive it. Make us aware to those in our midst and help us to love them as you love us. To you be all the glory in your name we pray. Amen. And just a couple things coming up. The men's retreat is May 3rd through 5th, and I believe you can still register. And the communion service is in a couple of days on April 3rd. Thank you all, and I hope you have a blessed day.